looking forward to have a very timely and uh, uh, perhaps even provocative discussion after each presentation. Uh, each presentation is going to be uh, very focused on uh, uh, timely and very important problem of heart failure and particularly the uh, uh, introduction and broader use of devices. Uh, I think that Frank is going to continue now and give you some more information. Well, just some quick housekeeping notes. There are going to be a spokesperson available uh, for you right after that. That's uh, Professor Martin Cowie. A lot of you all know that. He's a world leader in heart failure. And uh, he's going to leave Martin at the end, uh, yeah, but will be available. And all the uh, uh, ESC press uh, members will uh, be able to contact him for you if you are interested in some comments from him. The same with Professor Aldo Maggioni. He's also available for you, and please don't hesitate to contact the ESC staff uh, for his telephone number, and we arrange interviews for that. Well, I think we picked devices on heart failure on purpose, because heart failure, once the Cinderella in cardiology has now moved center stage, once years ago, we just had some diuretics and uh, that's all we could offer our patients with that life-threatening deadly disease. Now we have enriched our armamentariums on the drug side and devices have now enriched um, the armamentarium in heart failure and really uh, is a breakthrough, medicine, a breakthrough approach. So we have CAT devices, new mitral clips, we're going to talk about it, the ventricular assist uh, devices, artificial hearts, all of that is going to be covered in today's press conference. So without further ado, I think uh, we start with a, another president of a society of our okay, cardiology. This is the ERA president, Professor Angelo Oricchio from Switzerland. Andrew, it's all yours. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Ruciska, a distinguished member of uh, the press. Um, it is my distinct pleasure and honor to uh, present to you uh, the data of a permit care registry. Uh, permit care stands for percutaneous mitral valve repair in cardiac resynchronization therapy. And again, the study is, uh, in, is going to be uh, in publication in Journal of American College of Cardiology in a focus session in November this year. The scope of registry is here presented. Um, it was intended to uh, assess the feasibility of a mitral clip therapy in CRT patients who remain highly symptomatic, which means New York at class three and four, despite pharmacological therapy and more importantly, already received a device therapy with like right cardiac resynchronization therapy, but they have not responded probably to the, to the device and they're still remaining symptomatic. We like to assess the safety of this particular therapy in a highly selected group of population, given the fact that this is a very compromised group of patients which has not been previously assessed in any prospective randomized controlled trials. We like to, to uh, look at the peri and post peri morbidity and mortality, the change in symptoms in particular, and left ventricular dimension and volumes at three and six months. It's important to know that this was an investigator-initiated study, but I also like to disclose some uh, potential conflict of interest because Abbott provided an unrestricted grant to our center for echocardiographic data analysis. The demographic characteristic I here depicted, what I'd like to highlight is the fact that the vast majority or near all of these patients have been very old. Male with ischemic cardiomyopathy, and all of them have been already treated for resynchronization therapy for at least, as you can see here, at least three years. So, and they have a significant number of comorbidities which make these patients uneligible or even excluded from any surgical procedure. As you can see here indeed, there's a lot of patients who had stroke, diabetes, severe renal final, uh, failure, and more importantly, the judgment of whether to treat the patients with a standard surgical approach or a percutaneous approach was made uh, jointly by surgeon, cardiologist, interventionalist, and heart failure doctor who at the end also judge based on logistic score and SSTS score, which has been quite high, so indicating a very high perioperative and postoperative mortality in this selected group of patients. Here are the results. This slide depicts you the uh, New York that class before the uh, uh, CRT therapy, before the mantra clip, 
at the discharge at three months, six months, and 12 months. As you can note here, the amount of regurgitation was quite severe in the vast majority of patients, which was immediately reduced at the time of pre-discharge after mitral clip. And it was also important to know that there was a significant worsening between pre-CRT and mitral clip. However, after the intervention with mitral clip, there was a significant and continuous improvement in the reduction of uh, mitral valve insufficiency. As a result of this important change in mitral uh, valve insufficiency, the, the vast majority of patients showed a significant improvement in the New York art class, being with about 80 to 70 percent of the patients at 12 month follow up in the New York art class was one or two. So, a significant changes. Here are the data related to reverse remodeling. As you can see, at the uh, pre-CRT, the vast majority of patients had a significant depressed ejection fraction. This is quite common to all these patients before CRT, but the change over the last three years before the patients underwent a mitral clip was really minor. And it's also important to note that after the uh, uh, mitral clip treatment, there was a continuous effect in ejection fraction. This might not be considered uh, enough because we say that we also like to look at the volumes and diameters, and as you see, the same trend as a continuous reduction in both end diastolic and end systolic volume over time. The mortality data might be considered high, but indeed, this is a very high risk group overall. And you please note that the vast majority of these patients have been considered ineligible, so they have no option therapy at all. Despite that, we had a relatively uh, uh, acceptable mortality rate, 4.2%, at the uh, one year follow up, and this is the, uh, uh, the range of the follow up time, was about 18%. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chair, Mitral clip treatment in CRT now responded with significant functional mitral regurgitation and the highlights functional mitral regurgitation is feasible, safe, and improve uh, the functional class of these patients. Significant reduction of fu functional mitral regurgitation uh, induced LV reverse remodeling and increased LV ejection fraction is significant proportion of CRT non-responder. However, Prospective studies are warranted to confirm on funding and to evaluate appropriate timing of mitral clip treatment after CRT. I'm glad to take your question. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you very much, Professor Auricchio, uh, for all of you for this very uh, nice summary. For all of you who are interested in details, uh, I would like to uh, remind you that the full presentation is scheduled for Monday. Uh, between 4.30 to 4.45 uh, in Sofia Zone B room. Uh, now there, uh, there is a time for questions and uh, challenges for Professor Auricchio, but uh, before we take uh, this uh, part of the session, I would like to point out very clearly that Professor Auricchio described extremely difficult uh, population from the clinical perspective for all of us who are dealing with heart failure patient. He used uh, very properly the word no option patients. Professor Auricchio is interventionist electrophysiologist, so who is very, very often collaborating with a heart failure specialist and knows very well how difficult it is to treat such patients. And uh, the achievement of around 15, 16% mortality during one year is really, really astonishing. So uh, uh, please uh, feel free to ask the questions now. Yes? Could you kindly come to the microphone, identify yourself, and uh, Carry on with the Chris question. Kaiser with MedPage today. Um, despite the fact that these are extremely compromised patients, are there still some patients that uh, cannot undergo uh, mitral clip uh, surgery? And uh, if so, can you describe uh, what the uh, contraindications would be? Uh, well, this is a very good point, and thank you very much for rising. Um, I have to say that most of these patients um, uh, have, or all, they have functional mitral regurgitation. So this is really an anatomical criteria. 
by which um, uh, the patient has been selected. So all the others should, should not undergo this type of treatment. At least we do not have the data for that. There's an additional very important point that after the retrospective analysis of this data, which is already a, a, a study which is small uh, in size, we noticed that patients who are um, admitted or coming with an IV inotrope drug and have been treated uh, um, with mitoclip and having inotropic drug and unable to be weaned by the drugs, they have the highest mortality. So it seems that this is a group of population who probably will not be uh, ben or will not benefit at all and probably have anyhow a very high mortality. So those probably are the two criteria that we will consider now as an additional exclusion criteria based on our data so far. Thank you. There was another question, please. Yes, um, I apologize, I came in late and uh, perhaps you presented the data. Uh, stroke is a concern in uh, uh, percutaneous procedures, mm -hmm. for, especially for uh, this patient population. Did you measure stroke incidence? We did, and uh, we had no patients suffering a severe stroke or any type of stroke. Um, impacting uh, yes, this here they are the cause of death you can see here so this is the one sudden death uh, and this was a patient who uh, had uh, uh, despite the fact that he had the defibrillator he still continued to die in sudden death it is we, we believe after the interrogation of a device that is an electromechanical dissociation the cardiac uh, heart failure was all cardiac failure and the non cardiac one was for neoplastic reason so we have not observed any stroke event in this small population I like to emphasize this. Thank you very much. More questions? I have a quick comment, Angelo. Sure. I, think, I think it's also quite important that we stress out for the press that while well, that was, technology was developed for primary valvary disease, and now the majority of patients are in the heart failure world where they, the mitral valve gets a, a, a regurgitator relatively insufficient because the ventricle is dilating. So, and we need a trial there. If, initially, that was not developed with that in mind, but of course it makes sense because the majority of patients are there and there's a huge opportunity. And I think what your study did it, and why we picked this is, it really sets the stage for a trial. Indeed, I think that's a very relevant comment. Thank you very much for uh, bringing Thank this Thank you up. very much, Professor Auricchio. Uh, Indeed, uh, this is very timely and very interesting. I would even use the word fascinating report, as Frank already uh, commented. Uh, we are very much uh, awaiting this technology to be more widely introduced, not for patients with mitral valve disease, but for our patients with, uh, uh, I would say, functional mitral regurgitation. That's the population we are going to aim at now. So, so this is a really milestone showing this uh, data. So thank you very much again. <laughs>